Hi guys. It is a pleasant summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where I am in the middle of my five hour save the planet grass mowing here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. But of course my save the planet electric lawnmower, the damn batteries are charging. It takes like an hour and a half to charge these damn batteries. So while I'm waiting for my Save the Planet batteries to get back to work. I'm going to take a break from lawn mowing since it is Friday. It is Friday, August 26, 2022, I believe. So we're going to do what we do every Friday, and that is our ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with our friends over at mongabay.com. Rhett Butler and the boys and girls and uh, see what is in their grab bag of catastrophe this week and I can't think of a better way to open up a grab bag of catastrophe than Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria, the poster child of collapse. I am shocked to hear there are any mangrove trees left in Nigeria. But you will be surprised. You'll just be shocked to hear, not for long, as Niger Delta mangroves are in grave danger from oil spills, poverty, and invasive species. I think they left out sea level rise. Southern Nigeria's vast Niger Delta boasts Africa's most extensive mangrove forest and some of the world's largest fossil fuel reserves. Efforts to extract oil and gas have resulted in numerous oil spills which have damaged the region's biodiversity, hmm. as well as the livelihoods of coastal communities. Niger Delta mangroves are also affected by logging, farming, and urban expansion Yes, research suggests Niger Delta's mangroves could be gone within 50 years. 50 years, yes, 50 years, my ass. And it's not just their uh, mangroves, it's everybody's, uh, everybody's mangroves. Um, Okay, this one I probably should have let off with. This is also in the mainstream media. Study paints. This is an, all right, this is when I'm talking about if if I had a a no shit Sherlock button and a bullshit detected button. What I talk about is when I love to see a headline where you can hit the no shit Sherlock button and the bullshit detected button. And the same headline. Okay, you tell me which half of this headline deserves the no shit Sherlock button, which half deserves the bullshit detected button. Study paints bleak picture, a bleak picture for nearly all marine life without emission cuts. Hmm. New research published in Nature Climate Change has found that nearly 90% of assessed marine life would be at high or critical risk by the year 2100 if the world continues upon a high emissions pathway. Hmm. It found that the risks would be more concentrated in the tropics and that top predators would be more at risk than species lower down the food chain. However, if countries drastically reduce their emissions, the study found that climate risk would decrease for more than 98% of these species. You figure that out for yourself. But we're 
going to move along. Let's see, we're going to go from Nigeria to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka fuel shortage takes massive toll on efforts to save wildlife. Sri Lanka continues to face the brunt of the worst economic crisis in the country's history with depleted foreign reserves resulting in acute fuel shortages nationwide. The shortages and rations are affecting conservation efforts, including the timely treatment of wild animals, regular patrolling to thwart poaching, and mitigation actions to limit human-elephant conflict. Yes, fuel allocations for the Wildlife Conservation Department have been halved. Yes. The threat of forest fires also looms as the dry season gets underway, which typically calls for more patrols to prevent burning by poachers and forest encroachers. So here we see uh, the lack of fossil fuels, the lack of fossil fuels taking down the planet. There you go. Okay, here is a look, I guess anywhere on the planet where they use these damn thing, these uh, poachers use these snares. Snares, low-tech, low-profile killers of rare wildlife the world over. Snares are simple, low-tech, noose-like traps that can be made from cheap and easily accessible materials such as wire, rope, or brake cables. Easy to set. One single person, one single human, can place thousands with one report warning that snares, quote, are a terrestrial equivalent to the drift nets that have devastated marine and freshwater biodiversity. Used throughout the tropics, one estimate says 12 million, 12 million snares are now present in protected areas of Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, with the number likely far greater across the wider Southeast Asian region and don't forget Africa. And uh, I don't know why they left off uh, Latin America. I don't know why they left off the good old United States. <clears throat> While many hunters target smaller game to eat or sell, the snares are indiscriminate and often maim or kill non-targeted animals such as elephants, lions, and giraffes and endangered species including gorillas. One report calls snares, quote, the greatest threat to the long-term presence of tigers in Southeast Asia. Snaring is difficult to stop. Hunters hide snares from their prey which makes them hard to spot, though rangers collect thousands. It's like a game of hide and seek, says one expert. Forest rangers hasten to dismantle snare lines even as poachers reconstruct them at other locations. And then bringing up the end, behavior change. Behavior change is one solution to the snare epidemic. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Let's get back over to the east side of Sub-Saharan Africa. As their land and water turn saline, Kenyan communities take on salt farms. Between 1977 and the 1990s, the Kenyan government allocated 
thousands of acres of land to salt mining companies along the country's north coast. People had been living on that land for generations, despite it being officially gazetted as public land by the government. Following the allocation of land, local people, you know, local people who were not supposed to be there either, have complained of harassment and violent evictions by the salt company, as well as soil and waters rendered too salty to farm, drink, or fish. Yep, yep, yep. Good luck on all of that. Uh, what is going on with big oil and the IPCC? Although the IPCC's technical summaries on climate change are a key resource for assessment and future projections, the group's recent recommendations for policymakers appears to have been influenced by fossil fuel stakeholders. Hmm. Quote, quoting this, uh, this is a commentary. Quote, the public needs to know that representatives from oil and gas industries, as well as fossil fuel dependent governments, we're writing this report with billions of dollars moving towards technology-driven carbon removal schemes that benefit the fossil fuel industry's favored status quo. Yes. Uh, Climate philanthropy must increasingly support climate justice. Yes, a just transition to renewable energy. And don't forget, grassroots activism. Yes. One more time. Technology-driven carbon removal schemes that benefit the fossil fuel industry. This is why you are going to see this huge push for uh, th these BS uh, carbon removal schemes because they benefit big oil. Okay. Just a little bit of hopium. Okay, what's going on with gharials, the most distinctive of the crocs? They are also the most in need of protection. Slender snouted gharials are among the most distinctive of the world's crocodilians and the most in need of conservation action, a new study suggests. The study authors scored all 28 existing crocodilian species from around the world, from the Chinese alligator to the Orinoco crocodile, on their functional distinctiveness and threat ranking to arrive at a metric. Yes. The study suggests a third to a half of crocodilian functional diversity could be lost over the next century. In a third to half of, you know, come on guys. You will not believe this. Sumatra villagers protest Iron Mayan iron mine allegedly operating despite a stop work order. An iron ore mining company in Indonesia's Sumatra Island has continued operating despite the local government telling it to halt its activities. Hmm. An inspection by authorities has found the company 
to be lacking permits and posing risks to the environment and nearby communities. Yes. The villagers are demanding the government revoke the concession, citing ongoing damage to the environment, blah, blah, blah. It sounds to me like the government has already revoked their concession. Kind of uh, along that same vein, let's move over to Colombia, where a 13-year fight against gold mining in Colombian community marches on. Yes. All right. The weekend warriors are out. We had a good time now. All right. We're being invaded at Bugs in a Jar. The Embera Caramba indigenous community in Colombia has been resisting large scale gold mining activities in their region for 13 years now. Yes. Uh, the governor of the community and a member of the indigenous guard have received anonymous death threats and unidentified people surveilling their homes. Yes. According to the mining company's communications director, the company is making every effort to reach an agreement with the community and guarantee their right to prior consultation. Yes. Okay, here is a commentary titled, It is time to center African people in the conservation agenda. There you go. It is all about the humans. I love this. The African Protected Areas Congress was launched to position African protected areas within the broader goals of economic development and community well-being. Uh, yes, the African protected areas Congress uh, and of course the first thing they want to do uh, that the Congress is voting to do is let more people into protected areas. So when, when you hear the term protected areas, what are they protecting the area from? They're protecting the area from humans. That's what they're protecting it from. Humans. You put humans in a protected area and you have an unprotected area. Time to center people. Yeah. You know, come on. What happened to this, uh, this big push, you know, to save half the planet? Uh, every time they, they try to save a, a tiny little shred of the damn planet by suggesting maybe we make this little bitty area a human exclusion zone, which is the only definition of a truly protected area, is to exclude the damn humans out of it. And when we can't even have that with, without the protected area Congress talking about how we need more humans in a protected area. Maybe those are the protected areas on the half of the planet that we're not saving. Please get so sick of this crap. All right. Let's just stay here in our own country. Let's go out to the great state of California where we find biodiversity underpins all 
as California is finding out the hard way. Yes, California is known to be one of the most biodiverse states in the U.S., hosting about 6,000 animal species, subspecies, and plants. California has been bearing the brunt of climate change in recent years as wildfires and droughts transform the land. Yes. Uh, the filmmaker, this is this new video which I need to check out. The filmmaker says California is the quote, poster child of what is happening to our ecosystems around the world. You do not need to go to a sub-Saharan African protected area to see how to find the poster child of what's happening to our ecosystems around the world. Just go out to California, drive down the road, and look at through the windshield. Okay. What is going on with that big orangutan killing dam? Cursed Dam Project in orangutan habitat claims 16th life in less than two years. I thought they were talking about it has claimed its 16th orangutan louse, but I guess they're talking about uh, those, other, those other primates. A tunnel collapse at the site of a planned hydroelectric dam in Sumatra has killed a Chinese construction worker, bringing the death toll at the project site to 16 in the space of less than two years. The project is already hugely controversial because it sits in the only known habitat of the Tapanuli orangutan, a critically endangered species that scientists warn will be pushed further toward extinction if their habitat is fragmented by the dam. Opponents of the Chinese-backed project, can you say China Belt and Road Initiative, have long argued that the site's topography and location near a fault line make it, quote, wholly unsuitable for a large-scale infrastructure project and that the developers should abandon it. Good luck on that one. Uh... Anyway, that one's too complicated to get into. Well, I guess we're going back to Kenya this week. Poverty-fueled deforestation threatens Kenya's largest water catchment. Mau Forest in East Africa's largest native montane forest and Kenya's largest water catchment. Uh, Opomoro Forest Reserve is one of the area's protected areas, but its forest cover has been greatly reduced by humans, otherwise known as logging, fuel wood collection, and other poverty-driven human pressures. I love this article right next to that BS commentary how we need, why we need more people in Africa's protected areas. Here's a perfect example of what happens when you put people, uh, particularly poverty-stricken people, uh, inside a protected area. Ha! Huh. You have forest cover being greatly reduced. Beginning in 2018, thousands of families, thousands of families of humans 
that had established themselves inside the Forest Reserve's boundaries were evicted by the Ministry of the Environment and Forestry. Yes, part of a wider push that saw more than 30,000 people evicted, otherwise known as excluded, from, you know, the protected area. Despite government intervention and civil society initiatives to assuage poverty in the region, signs of fresh logging, charcoal burning, and overgrazing are evident again in the forest reserve. Uh, don't you get it? As Bill Hicks would say, don't you get it? Yes, now this fighting extractive industries in Ecuador, a Q&A with indigenous rights activist Maria Espinoza. Human rights defender Lena Maria Espinoza has been an outspoken critic of Ecuador's push for increased mining and oil development, but her work has also made her a target of death threats. Yeah, you can kiss goodbye, Lena Maria Espinoza. All right. We have prize winning coffee at risk from a Brazilian mine. Brazil's iron, Brazil Iron's mining operation in Bahia State have silted up springs and spread toxic dust across coffee and sugarcane fields belonging to traditional communities. Yes. Uh, now both coffee growing and kachaka making are under threat from the contamination of fields and water sources. Do you think so? Anyway, These, uh, guys, good lord, I just need to, so this guy, I like what he's doing, this dude, uh, French documentary filmmaker Victor Rault set sail from England, uh, aboard his sailing ship, the Captain Darwin, about a year ago. His goal is to retrace the same route taken by Charles Darwin two years earlier and assess how the species Darwin described in the 19th century are faring today. I think we all know the answer to that. Alright, guys, you will not believe this that Commodity Kings, Commodity Kings, Cargill and Bunge, and Bunge are buying soy from stolen indigenous land. Hmm. Commodity trading giants Cargill and Bunge source some of their soy used in products like chicken feed and pet food to land to where indigenous communities have suffered violence and displacement, according to a new report from EarthSight. Yes. Uh, do you think so? Oh, uh, okay. This story actually making the rounds of the mainstream media. As Europe eyes Africa's gas reserves, environmentalists sound the alarm. In the wake of an energy crisis caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine 
European countries are now turning to Africa for its natural gas reserves. The move is a turnaround from recent years when many of the same countries vowed to stop financing fossil fuel projects on that continent. Some African heads of state, along with their allies in the industry, have welcomed the change, saying gas extraction will help finance the transition to renewables. There you go. But environmental advocates are on the continent. Are there any environmental advocates on the, co the continent of Africa are pushing back saying that a new era of fossil fuel extraction will create more misery and harm the climate. Anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but I have an idea. Surely my Save the Planet electric lawnmower batteries have finished charging. So, uh, I've got to wrap this up and get out there and uh, save the planet by mowing my grass while I still can. I highly suggest you get out there, crank up your electric lawnmower, and save the planet by mowing your grass while you still can. Bye, guys.